Case number nine. Case number nine. Okay. So we're talking about prioritization. Here's another way to think about it. Number one, write this down. Actual problems over potential problems. So it's very easy when you know a lot about nursing to go off onto your own mind and say, well, what if this happens to the patient or what if this cough is tuberculosis? But I don't want you to do that for NCLEX. I want you to just read what is there. Okay. So actual over potential problems. The second one is acute problems over chronic problems as a priority. So if something is new, it's more important than a chronic condition. That just makes sense, right? The third, systemic problems before local problems. What does, this, what does systemic mean? If I say something systemic, what does that mean? It affects the entire body, the system, okay? Local is just one place. Good job, good job. So systemic problems before local problems before prioritization. And then trends over single event. So everybody can work out. Well, let's do these um, together. Let's see together. I'll put them on the screen. This will be our prioritization. The first group is A, and the client with the hemoglobin of 7.0. Due to suspected GI bleed, or the client with the hemoglobin of 7.5 due to suspected GI bleed and vomiting blood. Is it A or is it B? B, yes, B is the priority because B has vomiting blood. Okay, A doesn't have anything that you're not to suspect. What about two? You have the client with a laceration to the arm bleeding profusely. Or B, the client with the blood pressure of 89 over 60, A or B. B, 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 because it's systemic. Your blood pressure is low, it will affect your brain, your kidneys, right? Your liver. There will be three of this. A client with a history of diabetes mellitus type 2, blood glucose level of 500, or a client newly diagnosed with diabetes mellitus type 2 with a blood glucose level of 337. Which one? A or B? B, why B? Do you have a priority word there? Do you? Okay, what about this one? Or A is a client on IV diuretic in order to have strict intake and output calculated. Or B, a client who needs to have the next dose of IV medication initiated. A or B? Correct answer is B. B, why is B the right answer? Because what does A need? What are we doing? What's the task? It's just I and O's, right? When do we usually calculate those? At the end of the shift, calculator? But here, this patient needs to have a medication started. So that's a bigger priority. You see that now? Okay. Five, a client with a temperature of 100 degrees Fahrenheit, Fahrenheit diagnosed with varicella. Okay, we know what's varicella? Chicken pox, okay. Or B, client may have the same temperature, 100. They're diagnosed with HIV. Whose road do you go to first? A or B? Correct answer is B. B because the patient is immunocompromised. So, what do we want to go into the chicken box room first and then go into the varicella room? I mean, the Chicken box is with HIV. No, we can spread that to the patient. Okay. All right. Let's do six. A client with diarrhea related to Crohn's disease or a client with pain from renal stones. Who's the priority? 
pain or diarrhea is the one. Yes. Diarrhea is big on these legs. It's a huge problem. Okay? So pain is psychosocial, right? Diarrhea is an actual physiological problem. So we're gonna go with A, 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 A. We're doing good at these. That's okay. These take practice. These take practice. We're gonna talk through them. Seven, seven says this. A client with multiple sclerosis going outside for a walk, or a client who verbalized he is ready to accept his terminal illness. Who's the right word to hear? Safety. The safety. A. A is the priority. Multiple sclerosis. They're going outside. Okay? They can have complications with mobility, sensory problems. They don't know if they're cold or if they're hot. All right? Number eight, a new mother who needs education or the infant car seat, or a male client recently fired from his job and wants to talk. Who's the priority? Safety. Who's the priority? A, 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 safety. It's like it's all about safety. Now you know it's all about safety. Nine is a client who is reporting discomfort after an IV pain medication wasn't administered 20 minutes ago. Or B, a client who is due for scheduled IV pain medication in 15 minutes. Priority A is the priority. Person has an abnormal assessment, they should be pain free, but they're not. Okay, prioritization. You guys feel a little bit better with prioritization. You kind of kind of get it, how you think, you think about it. Yeah, I have it on the page. You can, you will, you must have to flex. It doesn't be able to stay in here, can't bring you all the time. And then I just wanted you to take a second and think about it, even if you don't write it down. If you pass the influx, how would it change your life? Three ways you can change your life by having the influx. Okay. Right. On page number 11, I'm actually going to take you inside of my influx review. Okay. No matter what type of learner you are, this program is for you. I'm going to tell you that I need to write something down. If I write it down, I don't forget it. Some people are auditory learners who need to hear it, and some people you need to see it. They're visual learners. I find that when it comes to learning a lot of information, like on NCLEX, it's very important that you find a program that is going to address your learning style. That also will help you be successful. So I want you to see what it's like studying with me and with you too. So you're going to fill out this workbook here by watching the lecture video. And it will, no matter if you're an audio learner, a visual learner, or a kinetic learner, you will be able to connect with the information. Let me congest the part failures. is one of the questions that a lot of people got wrong during the COVID game. So get your pins out. Yeah. Did anybody write down three reasons? Oh, yeah. I'm just curious. How would you like how would the impact change your life? I would kind of say, make like change your life. The cool part of it. Anybody write something down? I thought you for me, it was about me to bring myself. I have three kids. Well, not just me by myself, but Mark, too. We have three kids together. We have a 10, a 7, and a 3 year old. And we brought them from America here. And um, I'm just really happy about that because passing influx allowed me to do that. So I'm just happy to be able to bring my kids here and uh, be all of the people. Who else? Who else? As an influx, how would it change your life? Who has one? 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 Awesome, awesome. And remember, we have our brothers from uh, Health Solutions in the back that can help assist on that journey. Yes. Who else? Who else brought something? All right, I'm going to make sure that's going on. This is such a big test. You guys all just seem like you're seriously studying and want to know about it. Um, first, I'm going to get something that is stupid.
I feel like it has an end in this means that I can do the work in the future. Uh, with body impairments, the last one is road. Um, it's a long school, of course. Uh, Huge. Yeah, so we went on to coming at Mars. Huge, it's huge. Yeah, it's huge. Awesome, awesome. So you said confidence, yeah, yeah. qualified, yeah. and personal growth. I know. I did not heard one else. Definitely. Um, for me, um, if I lost my head, it's a great privilege for me. Oh, oh, oh. oh. And for my family, the money is not involved. I can never take care of my family and care for them as well. And uh, I'm able to yeah, go for vacations and be all around the world. No, 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 Oh, uh, what? Sorry, guys. I don't know. 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 I that was my very first paycheck, 180,000 pesos, 3,000 dollars. That was my first check as an RA. I never had that much money before in my life, ever. So I've been able to take my kids to Disney a lot now. Four professional growth as a registered nurse. Ten years for financial stability plus I have a goal to help other family members who are deprived with uh, in terms of financial. Yeah. And the most uh, also goal is uh, being a family together. I'm sure that I've already passed my computer. Awesome, 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 awesome. Wow, anybody else would like to share? All right, okay, we're going to take two more. I'll take you. All right, I'm running, I'm running. I'm running. Here we go. Here we go. Uh, I'm following uh, Ray Moore in TikTok. So since I uh, reviewed my index during the pandemic, so now I pass already an index. And I work as an instructor for the Sierra Informa as an online instructor. So I'm teaching also an index. I'm an index coach. I know you have a lot of you. So I'm Dr. Arlo and I'm Dr. Sullivan. You can do anything once you mention any place. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Thank you guys so much for being here. Wow. Changes is life changing, guys. Life changing. There we go. There we got to talk. We got to talk. Here we go. Uh, I see you next for me. We're going to bring all of our parents. Because um, they really have a lot of sacrifice to make for my college yeah, education. Yeah. So it's for them because my, uh, my parents, especially my mother, um, she's the one who encouraged me to be a nurse. So it's for them. Amazing. Amazing. Yes. I'm going to be a nurse. I'm going to be a kids who are going around for me. Um, one of the things I did when I became a nurse is I retired from my She no longer has to work. She just I just came out of it two weeks. It's so weak. All right, so listen, guys. 
and tachycardia. You will be restless if you have fluid in your lungs. You won't be able to breathe. Your heart rate is going to go up. All right, easy way to think of left side and heart failure. Now let's look at the right side. There is an R in the right, and there is an R in the rest of the body. So that means that the fluid will be in the rest of the body, everywhere outside of the lungs. So signs of right-sided heart failure are peripheral edema. Your client will gain weight because that fluid will be building up. Your client will gain weight. Your client will have an abdominal distension called ascites. Ascites. Your client will have enlarged organs. The heart is going to be enlarged. The liver, the spleen, they're all going to be enlarged because they're going to start retaining fluid. All right? And then, of course, you're going to have that jugular venous distension. Now, when it comes to congestive heart failure, most clients will have failure on both sides. But usually it's the left first and then the right. Okay, so left and then right. What are the diagnostic tests, the medications, and the nursing interventions that are important? Let's discuss them now, starting with the test. The first test that I want you to know is the PRO-BNP. And the PRO-BNP test is a blood test. And it is specific to systolic heart failure. So the magic number with the PRO-BNP is 100. Any number over 100 represents congestive heart failure. Now, a lot of nurses working are not familiar with the pro B and P. So, let me give you this example. My husband, when his father was in the hospital, um, I went in to visit him, and I knew that his I knew that his history included congestive heart failure, and I noticed that he was getting IV fluids. So I asked the nurse, what is his pro B and P? She said, well, I don't know. I don't know what pro B and P is. So I asked her to find out for me. And when she came back, his pro B and P was 4,000. So it's very important for nurses to understand how laboratory values work with disease processes. Someone with their OBP of 4,000 should not be getting IV fluids. The next diagnostic test for congestive heart failure will be a chest x ray. Chest x ray shows enlarged organs that will help validate if the patient is retaining water. The third test is an arterial blood gas, which you guys are excellent for, and that will help to confirm the diagnosis of CHS. The medications that you need to know are number one, we give oxygen to clients with congestive heart failure, particularly left sided, because they will have issues with shortness of breath. Two is the Joxin. Why do we need the Joxin? What does that do? The Joxin is a cardiac glycoside. It helps the heart to contract or pump more forcefully, more effectively. And you can read about the Joxin in your quick facts for A+. The third is morphine. Why do we give our clients morphine who have congestive heart failure? Morphine will take away the pain. It is very painful to have fluid building up in the body where it's not supposed to be. Remember, the body is made up of water, but the majority of the water is carried by our cells. It should not be carried in our vessels or our skin. Four, diuretics. And of course, diuretics can be very helpful to help remove that additional fluid. So great. You guys know the signs of left-sided and right-sided congestive heart failure. You know the diagnostic tests that are important. You know the medication. Let's end it with the nursing interventions. The nursing intervention makes sense based off of the diagnosis of the patient. And that is why when you're preparing for inquest, it's really important 
to get back to that content because you will see the total picture of your patient. When it comes to the activity level, we want these clients to want to bed rest. Secondly, we want what kind of diet? What kind of diet is applied with objective heart failure? Actively a low sodium diet because we don't want that additional water that is coming from salt intake. Low sodium diet, third point, food restriction. These clients don't need to drink a whole lot of fluid because they're already containing it. Four, we want to monitor for oxygen toxicity. Remember, oxygen is a medication. It has side effects to our clients. And then the final point, we need to monitor for the Johnson toxicity. All right, I just have a few practice questions for you guys. I want you to give them a try without me and then play the video when you're ready to go over the answer. The practice question starts with Mr. Green. Mr. Green is scheduled to see chromosomes, 60 milligrams, IV, CID, for diagnosis of CHF. Chromosomes, a medication, will have just with a spot on the cut, so let's all the slides. Out of all the points here, we expect chromosomes to decrease blood pressure and second, increase urine output. Those are the reasons why we are giving the chromosomes. Some of you guys may have decreased pain, but that is not an expectation of the chromosomes. We need to give a pain medication in order to do that. All right? Question number two says, a 62 years old client presents with dyspnea and blue colored nails and lips. The client has a suspected history of CHF and is admitted to the ER. The client has not been compliant with his medication regimen and states he has not taken his hydrochlorothiazide for four days. The nurse should anticipate a diagnosis of which of the following. Oh, I hope you guys pick number two. We are expecting pulmonary edema for this client. Number three, you are teaching the parents of a child with congestive heart failure about fluid intake. Which statement indicates an understanding of monitoring fluid retention? So here we're looking for fluid retention. That is the fluid that's staying within the body. So the correct answer will be number three, I will weigh the child each day at the same time as this is the best way to determine fluid retention. Some of you may have picked weighing the diaper daily as the best way to monitor fluid retention, but weighing the diaper will tell you fluid output, not the fluid that is retained. So the best answer is I will weigh the child each day. Okay, last question. Number four, a client comes into the wellness clinic after being diagnosed with congestive heart failure. She complains of being tired after only very little activity. Which activity suggestion would the nurse give to preserve energy and decrease oxygen weight? So we're looking for two things here. And the first answer is eating small, frequent meals throughout the day. This is going to be the best way for the client to preserve her energy and decrease oxygen demand. Remember, clients with congestive heart failure, they do become very tired. So if we have them do that one set of specific times and doing all of the daily tasks at once, that is going to increase their oxygen demand specifically um, to a level that they may not be able to cope with. The third choice of removing the oxygen therapy is not something that we want want to advocate the client to do. That's very dangerous for them to take off their oxygen. And then four, exercising after waking up in the morning, that would leave the client tired all day. So the second choice is the best. And remember, when we're doing inflex, we want to look at the choices in front of us and be able to pick the correct one from what we are given. So, I am sure with more practice, you guys will feel comfortable doing just that. Congratulations. Let's keep it moving. We are doing a fantastic job studying, and I'm having a great time to do that. Okay, so that is one of the, my favorite lectures to do. If you are um, if you're joining my YouTube program, you will see that the videos are 
microsize them that way. But the real goal is to just give you the safety highlights of all of the different categories where your banks understand. Most people finish my program in about 30 days. So it doesn't take long to prepare for a device. Literally, when you make the decision that this is what you want to do, you can prepare very quickly if you have a system in place. So I'm looking for a lot of testimonials. These are the subjects. They don't check about. Even if you don't do my program, these are the subjects that you have to have mastered before your a exam. So I typically start out with pregnancy. I go through the normal high-risk boards to the developmental milestone. So a lot of maternity in the beginning. And then we work our way through age-expected changes, basic care and comfort, orthopedics, medication administration, antibiotics. And I just want you to know that these videos are very short. So I got medication administration video, things like that. That's 14 minutes. Antibiotics is, I think, 18 minutes in back. I'm the type of person, my attention span is very short. So I never lecture long here. But scroll on up. There's about 40 videos in my program. It's really easy to get through. I give you a daily calendar, and we always end it with psychiatric concepts and prioritization. Prioritization is one of the last things you should be practicing before your AMPLEX exam, right? Because you have to be able to incorporate all the other disciplines to be able to prioritize. All right. So that's the inside of what my YouTube looks like. It is a video based platform, there's no PowerPoints or slides. Um, and that's because the type of mother that most nursing students are, you need to have somebody explain it to you the important things. You just learn a lot quicker when somebody tells you what's important, better read it. Also has a question bank as well, included with it is everything in one place. So when you're ready to do your questions, we also have the next generation of question types, which we're going to get into. So you're able to do case studies and computer adaptive exams in the B2 platform. If you're taking next gen NCLEX, which all of you are, this being able to read the case studies is extremely important. One of the few changes that was made is that there's more reading, a lot more reading on this NCLEX exam. And that is because you have the case study presentation. So you'll be able to do questions. The question bank is about, there's over 2,000 questions in my question bank. And a lot of those are in case study presentations. So I think they're just showing you the different elements of it. We gotta finish this workbook. The last thing that we will do today is a next generation question case study. And so you're about to take a report on a real patient. You have their medications in front of you, you have their vital signs and their laboratory values. What you do with this information will determine if you are ready and on the right track to have an influx. Okay. So what page am I on? I'm looking for the handout report box. It is on page 13. Okay. I need, I need you guys to just stay with me. I know we've been learning a lot of stuff today. So finish the class out strong. Okay. Finish the class out strong. Okay, here's a report on your patient right now. Pretend like we're in the hospital, we're at the bedside, I'm giving you this patient. Patient's name is Robert Hughes. At that there. He's admitted four days ago. This is the box on page 13. It's a blank box here. We're writing the information in here. Robert Hughes admitted four days ago. Full code. Full code. The patient is alert and oriented. Acts four. ANO acts four. He has plus three bilateral leg swelling. No. There was one episode of shortness of breath that oxygen, two liters of nasal cannula, put on the patient for that one. Six hours ago, uh, it was resolved. Just had one episode of short syndrome. The client is requesting a bath because the skin is itching. 
and the skin is itching, but I gave them low skin. Gave the patient low skin. Reports pain in the legs, six out of ten. The dimer of the patient was positive. The dimer was positive. The patient has a two gram sodium diet quarter. Next video. Okay. And that is a patient in your mind, which is thinking what your face will look like. You know what the chief complaint is. What's going on with this patient? Okay, let's turn the page over to page number 14. What you have in front of you is the case study presentation for next gen NCLEX. So look at it. At the top, you have here information about your patient. You have his name, gender, birthday, have full code status, just an hour. Below that, you have the medications. Everybody see the medications? What kind of medication is like to the brill? What kind of medication is like to the brill? In the is blood pressure medicine. Okay, you're paying for blood pressure medication. Anoxaparin. What kind of medication is anoxaparin? Anticoagulant. The patient's on anticoagulant. Perosamide. What is that? Ready? Ventilopalol. What is that? Beta blocker. You have to know pharmacology. Okay. Anamoxicillin. What type of medication is that? Antibiotic. Okay, good. Now, let's look at your patient's 